Hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I have a beautiful die set. It's a standalone die set from Scrappy Tells Crafts that I'm going to be creating with. This is called the Outlined Tulip Assortment Two-Layered Metal Dies. I'm going to create a card set using these. And I can tell you right now, these were so much fun to create with. So I'm going to pull them out and snip them apart. I store all of my dies in their original packaging. So I'm being kind of careful not to rip the paper, the packaging. They are taped down. And then to get rid of the stickiness, I always like to pull out my anti-static powder and just pour a little bit over it and rub it around so that it takes the stick off of the tape. And then I can just tap off the excess into my garbage can and then I just store them in its original packaging. So let's snip these apart. These are really easy just to bend back and forth, but I always like to snip them apart and then cut off the little bits that stick out. And I do this over a garbage can just so they don't go flying everywhere. There are a lot of dies in this set and you get the tulip shape as well as the outline for it. I'll cut a bunch of these out and show you what I'm talking about. So you get five tulips and two stems and then all of the outlines for each of these. I picked out a bunch of cardstock in pretty pastel colors that I'm going to be using as well as some black cardstock. I'm going to cut these out off camera just because I do cut out a bunch, but I cut out all of the outlines in black cardstock. I cut them all out with the yellow, pink, and purple. But let's start with the yellow. I have some Wild Honey Distress Oxide ink here, and I'm just going to put some quick color down on this. I want it to kind of fade off as I move up to the top of the tulip. The darkest color is going to be at the base of each flower. And then I have Kitsch Flamingo. This is the new Distress Oxide ink color. And oh, I love this color. I'm a big fan of pink. But I have pink cardstock and then adding a little bit of this color to it just adds some depth and dimension to these die cuts. So again, I add the darkest color to the base of the tulip and then fade out as I go up. And then here is Wilted Violet for my purple cardstock. And then this is just fast and fun coloring to do, or inking, I should say. But I'll ink up all of these tulips. And then I can add a little bit of green to the stems. And I'm using Lucky Clover on some green cardstock. This was very therapeutic for me because the day I was creating this card, it was snowing like crazy here in Chicago land. And I'm not a fan of winter. So this just helped me prepare for spring and um, take the awful snow <laughs> out of my mind. My next step is to glue on all of the outlines. And some of these I glue on a little bit askew just so you can see a little more of the green of the stems. But doesn't that look sharp and pretty? And now for the tulips, I'm just putting little dabs of glue behind these die cuts. It doesn't take much. And then I can just put them down on the flowers. And look how pretty the purple ones are. I don't know which ones I like the best, but they're all so pretty. This is just a piece of scrap paper that I'm working on. I usually do all of my ink blending on a vinyl mat because it allows you to move the ink around, whereas this paper just absorbs it. But I couldn't find my vinyl mat. I want to get one of the new ones. I guess they're not that new anymore, but one of the mats by Waffle Flower. Now on to card number one. I'm going to do more ink blending on this panel. I'm using the same three colors, the Wild Honey, Kitsch Flamingo and Wilted Violet. And I want to get a soft blend between these three colors. This is a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that I'm using, which is great for ink blending because it has kind of a 
film over the top of it that helps you blend the colors and move the color around. I'm going to mat this panel onto a piece of black cardstock, and I did cut it down so that the, it is a little bit smaller than an A2 sized card. You can see my pieces over there to the right. I'm going to put those to good use. They were just too pretty to throw out. And now to assemble my tulips, I'm just going to use a little dab of glue at the tip of the greenery and glue it down. So I'm back to using my black craft mat, as you see here. I was using my gray Arteza one, but this black one is nice because it has more of a slick surface, so I can move my dies and my die cuts around more easily on this one. So here are all three of my flowers for this card put together. I'm going to flip these over and add some foam adhesive behind them. And then this is just going to be a very simple card. I'm just going to use three uh, tulips on this. I want to figure out my placement before I adhere them down. But look how fun and pretty that is. I love these colors. I'll start with my middle flower first and carefully remove the backing of the adhesive. And then I can just put this in place. And now for my pink tulip, I do put them down on my mat just so I don't bend them. And then the purple one comes last. This is going to be a happy birthday card. And my dies come from another Scrappy Tells Crafts die set. This is from the Slimline Shadow Box die set. I kept them in their negative space just so I could sponge on some more ink. This is again the uh, Wild Honey. Just helps to keep them in place. I really love the font on these dies and it also comes with a shadow outline if you want to add it to that. But I'm just going to use the sentiment dies as they are. I'm using my craft pick to poke out the insides of these letters. Look how pretty they are, just dainty. I'll add little dabs of glue behind them. And then these are going to go right over the tulips, the stems of the tulips. There is a dot for the eye on the birthday, and I just kept it in the negative space until I'm ready for it. The dies kind of overhang the tulip stems, but that's all right. I think it'll work out just fine. I'm going to put a little sequin behind the Y just to hold it up a little bit. And then I'm going to put a little dot of glue over the eye. And then I can just poke it out of the negative space and pop it into place. I'm going to attach this to a white card base. And then here's where I add the sequin just to hold up the Y. I'll add to two more around this panel. I like to use them in threes, an odd number. Here is a close-up look of card number one. On the inside, I used some leftover scrap paper that I trimmed off this panel. For card number two, I'm using the same three Distress Oxide inks, but I'm going to use a cloud stencil from MFT. And again, the top is going to be the Wild Honey. This goes really fast with this cloud stencil, and it looks so pretty when it's done. But I'm just putting the yellow clouds at the top, and then I'll go in with the Kitsch Flamingo. And then the Wilted Violet. And I, I clean off my stencil with a baby wipe in between, just so I don't transfer color. Okay, here it is all done. Isn't that pretty? And then I have my flowers ready to adhere. I just got to put on the heads of these tulips. Again, I'll use just a little dab of glue because I'm going to pop these up with more foam adhesive. But I'm going to create a little window for these tulips using some black cardstock and an oval die. Just press those in place for a minute to get them to adhere. 
So I cut an oval out of this black cardstock and popped it up with some foam strips. And then I'm just going to adhere this over the cloud panel. This is an A2 sized card again, and I didn't cut it down this time. Now I can start adhering my tulips. So I'll put the middle one on first again. And then the other two, I'm going to have them kind of overlapping the black frame. So I'll add a little bit of liquid glue on one side of the tulips. And then it's going to be perfectly level with the black frame. My set of cards are all pretty similar, but just little differences here and there. My sentiment is another die cut, and this one says hello. It's from the Slimline Shadowbox die set again, the same one that the happy birthday came from. And this one's going to be Kitsch Flamingo Pink. It's so much easier to blend the ink on when you leave it in the negative space. These dies pop out really easily from their negative space. And the H is separate. So I'll use my craft pick to poke out the insides of the E and the O. And then I'm going to again attach them over the stems of the tulips. I'm going to move this H over just a little bit. And then I can add more glue behind the rest of the die cut. And press that over the other two flowers. I'm going to use some sparkly silver gems on this card panel. The adhesive on the backs of these gems weren't very sticky, so I'm just adding a little bit of glue just to make sure they don't pop off. I'm going to put down three of these. I thought the gems looked best kind of on the lower portion of the card, down by the stems. Now I can attach this to another white card base. And on the inside, I use another leftover strip of paper from the first card. And here's a close-up look. I love the little bit of dimension behind the black frame. It just provides a cute window for these tulips. Now on to card number three, and I made up several panels for this, but I'm just going to show the purple panel. So I'm starting out with a piece of purple cardstock and then some more of the wilted violet, and I'm putting the darkest color down at the bottom and just kind of fading out as I go up the card panel. I'm using my Spectrum Noir glitter pen, and I'm just going to pour some of it out onto my acrylic block. And then I'm going to flick some of this across the panel. And this adds the prettiest sparkle and distressing to the card. I'm trying to turn it so it catches the light and you can see all of that fun sparkle. So I did this with a pink panel and a yellow panel. I did it also with another purple one, and here it is all dry, and I cut it down so it's a little bit smaller than an A2 sized card. Here's my pink, and then here is the yellow. You could also use Wink of Stella. I, I used both glitter pens just to see if there was a difference, and I couldn't really tell the difference between the two glitter pens. But I'm going to use this dry panel and attach it to another black card panel. This one is going to have a lot of tulips on it. I really love how this one turned out. So instead of just my three tulips, I'm going to put seven down on this panel. The tulips in the back, I'm going to adhere down flat with some glue. And then the flowers on top, I'm going to pop up with some foam adhesive. I have an idea of where I want these tulips to go on this panel, but I do end up pulling some up and moving them around a bit. I fussed with this card a little bit. And now for the tulips that are going to go in front of the flat ones.
And again, I put down an odd number of tulips. They say odd number of things on your cards look more pleasing to the eye. And I agree, it, it does somehow. It really does. And this is where I start moving things around a little bit. It does rip the panel, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden by another tulip. Now for my seventh tulip. This card turned out really fun because the tulips are dimensional, but they're sitting on top of the other tulips, which makes them tilt a little bit this way and that way. And it turned out to be just a really fun look. I'm going to add a little bit more of the Spectrum Noir on the tulips in front. This is going to be another birthday card. I always have need of birthday cards in my stash. And I'm putting down the Wilted Violet at the bottom of the words. And then at the top, I'm going to use the Kitsch Flamingo Pink. I use both the makeup brushes and the foam brushes. I'm not exclusive to either one. It's just whatever's clean, <laughs> whatever I can find in my stash. And then I decide to cut out the birthday sentiment one more time. It just needed more yellow at the bottom of this card. So this one's going to be completely uh, wild honey. And then I'm just doing the same thing. I'm going to lay them across the tulip stems. Scrappy Tells Crafts is a new craft company. And I'm so impressed with all of their beautiful dies and stamps. I highly encourage you to go over there and check them out. I'll have the link to the shop listed below, as well as links to the products that I'm using on these cards. To finish up this card, I'm using a lot of clear water droplet sequins. And I'm gluing down a lot of them this time. Here's a close-up look at the finished card. I had so much fun creating these springtime cards. Thanks for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you were inspired, and I hope you all have a wonderful crafty day. Bye.